Hey what's up guys, Chris Cohen here and welcome to a new Creative Visuals tutorial. If you're coming from the Filmmaker React series guys, welcome on board, awesome to have you. Filmmaker React episode come up every Sunday, they're a blast to make and I love the interaction with you guys. But today we're gonna take a look at the super cool kind of energy trackable Z effect and we're gonna use After Effects to kind of take a look at the tools that we can use to make the effect happen. Now I am gonna be using the new released Cinema Orbs 5K Link will be in the description below guys in the Creative Store if you guys would like to take a look at and also if you're a Creative Vault member the project has been updated in the dashboard and is ready for you to download. So I really hope you enjoyed the preview of the effect. I really wanted to make something kind of cinematic and of course it's anime inspired. It was really fun to make and I think it turned out really cool and of course there are more tutorials to come on the other things that you saw. Now before we get started guys a massive thank you to Skillshare for making today's tutorial possible and for giving the first 1000 of you guys a free two months subscription so you can get started with your passion today. Skillshare is an online dashboard community full of creative tutorials and lessons on anything that you can think of. Also great for filmmaking, photography, editing, coloring and things like this but anything that you have a passion for Skillshare is the place to be. On a personal level I use Skillshare to get my starting point when it comes to using a different program which was DaVinci Resolve because sometimes clients will ask you to use a different program they will ask you if it's possible to work with them as a freelancer on those programs so I use Skillshare and I got started like this so do not miss out guys it's a great opportunity it's free for two months for the first 1000 of you and you can get started with the tips and tricks that you need to unleash your creativity and start with your passion. I will have the links in the description guys. Let's fire up After Effects and let's get started on the Dragon Ball Z Energy Orb Effect. Okay guys, so I went ahead and opened the Critics Vault project so we can take a look. So originally you have the effect that we would render out and I double click and I open the VFX composition of it. So if I isolate my footage, I want to talk to you guys a few tips and tricks when it comes to recording your clip. So basically you want to have your actor, yourself, um, whoever is performing the move themselves to kind of act as if an energy blast is occurring between their hands and they can tremble the hands around a bit because that's gonna help look as if they're trying to fight an energy stuck between them. Keep in mind do not obscure do not let your hands obscure where the effect will take place because that would be quite a hassle to rotoscope out to make the effect look as if it stands before, behind it. But also, if you have a few fingers looking like they're gonna basically be up front, that's actually good because the best way to sell some visual effects is to have them being obscured by objects as they would be if it was real life. So that's a few things here to keep in mind guys and with that let's get started. The first thing we need to do is actually track our fingers and create a mat so that when it comes to the energy orb and its particles when they explode in space they would be obscured by this finger I think, maybe this one, maybe this one and maybe that one. So we need to create an, an, a, a mat basically to tell After Effects wherever that mat is if I actually open it up right here so you can see how it looks, do not show the effect. And that's how you can get away with basically composing things and making them look good. So if I go, for example, in this frame over here, we can take a look at how to pull this off. So the first thing that you need to do is track the hands. So I'm gonna right click on my clip, go to track and stabilize and then select track motion. After Effects is going to open the track and it's going to give me a point here. I'm going to make it a bit larger and I'm going to track. I'm going to tell it within the small square, this is what I want you to track. And with the larger square, is After Effects is going to look where that point basically has maybe gone through. So once you selected this, you can either go to first frame or last frame or start, wherever, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure to track backwards and forwards and then select play. And After Effects is going to go through, as you can see, and track our clip. Once After Effects is done tracking, then you need to create a new node. If you hit on your keyboard Control, Alt, Shift and Y, you're going to make a new node object. And then you can go Edit Target, select that node object, press OK, and then press Apply. Once that's done, let me go back. Once that's done, you need to create a new solid and you hit Control Y make it black, press OK, 
and then turn it off so you can see what's happening. So if I zoom in here, I'm going to select my pen tool and I'm going to start drawing the, the object basically that I want the mat or solid to take form. So basically I will go here to this hand, let's say, and I'm going to start making my mask. And the more accurate you will be, the, bet, the better, but you know, you don't have to be crazy as well. So let's say that this is my mask here. Once that's done, if I open it up, you will see that we have this kind of shape. Then if you press F on the keyboard while your clip, your layer is selected, you're going to bring up the feather ring and the mask properties. So let's put a mask feather of five. And as you can see, it's going to start softening up the edges. And that's a cool way to make the, the, if, uh, the solid basically blend in smoothly and not be as jarring if it was zero. Once that's done, you take this parent tool and you link it to your null object that we created before, as you guys can see, null 2, for example. And that way, the mask is going to follow the track points of your hand and it's going to follow the hand, basically, as it moves through space. And that way, the solid follows the hand. And once the object is linked to not show within this black object, then it's got the VFX asset is going to look as if, if it stands behind your hands, which is pretty cool. So let me turn this off for now. So if I open up my orb, my orb, I use the Phoenix Orb Cinema Orb from the Cinema Orbs Pack, and it's a really cool, high quality 5K orb. So this is what's happening now. Yeah, if I isolate my orb for a moment, you can tell how it looks, but you can see that it's obscured over here. And that is because it's following the map that we created before. And now if I zoom in here, you can see that the asset stops showing where it shouldn't, for example, this finger and this way as the hands sits, it stops and it's obscured. And that way it really sells the effect that the orb stands with between the two hands. So basically all you have to do is select your asset, in this case, the Phoenix orb, drag it in the composition and you're good to start. Then I played with the scaling values, for example, because this is a 5K um, asset, I toned it down to 55% scale and it's all about kind of playing around positioning the asset between the space of your clip and see where its position makes sense. Now I do want to show you guys a bit. I'm going to take my cinema orb and drop it into a new composition and I'm going to go in here and kind of play through its time. So if we take a look at the orb, this is how the original orb looks like. So it's basically a combination of white particles as well as color particles and this way is really great because you can use it instantly by drag and dropping it into your clip and it's already ready to go and it looks amazing but in if you want to color it for example let's say make it blue then you have that option as well and i'm going to show you how you can color those assets so i'm going to go to the effects control over here and we can see we have a curves adjustment to kind of make it a bit darker and then we have VC Color Vibrance. Now, this is a free plugin from Video Code Pilot, and it's a great way to colorize assets that basically are light based, let's say a lightsaber, or in this case, some awesome energy orbs. So I go to Effects, Video Code Pilot, and I select Color Vibrance, and I select a cool blue over here, and that is basically it. And if you want to kind of like increase its vibrancy when it comes to color, you can select, go to Effects, Call correction and select vibrance again. That is the building After Effects tool and kind of pump up the vibrance to make it look a bit cooler. Now, with that out of the way, guys, there is a trick that I want to talk to you guys, which is basically giving an energy object the expression tools to kind of make it vibrate through space. Because since it's an energy kind of emitting element within the space, it shouldn't be static. And it wouldn't really work if you kind of like used the hand null object that you tracked and parented to this asset because it's going to look very weird if an energy orb starts following your hands and the movement is not going to be realistic at all. So the way to kind of make it look great is you can use a wiggle expression to make the element vibrate in space. So if you press P on your keyboard, you can select, and I'll open this one, 
you can select press alt on the keyboard and then hit the position keyframe and this is going to open the expressions tab and this is for this specific scene this is what i wrote wiggle parentheses 2 comma 25 comma 1 close parentheses and by playing with these values you can accentuate how much the orb is going to vibrate and how violently it's going to move and by playing around and really refining the values you can make uh, any scene basically fit the asset because you can fine-tune these uh, values and with that if I isolate this and I kind of turn the, everything to kind of down uh, raise wise and I play through you will see that the orb is kind of like moving through space quite violently so if I scroll through here and we take a look at our layers kind of outer line and I move through space you can see how it moves and that is how we pull off this kind of vibrating effect. Now, with that done, as you guys can see, it looks quite good, but it's not yet there yet. And that is because basically we have a very high energy element, but it doesn't affect the actual clip itself. So if that orb was actually there, it should affect the light of the scene and emit very high kind of bluish tones. Now, if I open everything up, we can see how the final thing looks. Oh, not the mat, actually. There we go. This is the final effect. Now, technically, this is not correct because the light is not realistic here. If there was an orb between my hands, it would light up the hands themselves. Like, there would be a huge light leaking here and here and on the shirt and everything. And you can do this if you have some LED panels and you can really fine tune them where they should add but I didn't have that choice but I think the way that I'm going to show you it's it still end up looking really awesome and the viewer doesn't really snap out of it because we're not having photorealistic light emission basically so the way that you do this is you create new adjustment layers if you hit ctrl alt and y after effects will create a new adjustment layer then what you do is you go to uh, your ellipse tool which is basically here and you click down to open the properties and you select the ellipse tool and then you create a mask now the reason why we create a mask is because we don't want the effect that we're going to put on the layer to affect our entire composition but we want to center it around the orb so you create a mask and then you hit f again on the keyboard and as you can see now, we have a very huge feather value. If I open up the effect so we can see what's happening. If I press on the feather value and put it back to zero, you can see what's gonna happen. Now we have a very harsh effect, but when you start playing with the feather value and that really depends on your resolution, you start bleeding out the effect and it's a very soft transition between where the effect takes place and how it edges out. So that is how to compose it, but let's take a look at what the actual effect is. So once again, I used color vibrance to colorize the effect and basically make it have a blue hue as it affects the layer below. Then I play with the saturation a bit, kind of pump it up, and then I put an exposure effect, but then I used the same wiggle expression by hitting Alt and the keyframe. And if we go, I open up here and we go to effects, we go to exposure and we go to the master value and to the exposure itself. You can see we have another wiggle expression and what that does is making the effect and the layer flicker. As this is a light based element and it moves very violently at, as it emits energy, the light that it emits, if it was realistic, it should flicker as well as it fluctuates through the energy bursts, etc. So with this exposure effect, and by putting the wiggle expression in, now we can fine tune the way the flickering occurs as well. We can have it be very like up and down, or we can have it be very subtle. And that way, with those tools, you can start really refining the look of the effect. Now, last thing to do is to change its blending mode. This is how it would look if it was normal not really bl blending in as you can tell you can either use screen or lighten in this case i really liked how lightened uh blending mode uh looks so i used that one then i had another layer to kind of second that and that was it basically playing around refining those values that i talked to you guys about 
and then taking it from there. Now the last thing to do when it comes to this effect is create a very cool kind of like distortion effect that affects everything as that energy emits power basically. So the way to do this is to create another adjustment layer, you guessed it, and then create another mask of where we want that distortion to occur, which is basically where the orb is, the hands, and a bit outside that. And then press F and play with the feather values. In this case, it's quite small because we're playing with distortion to make the effect bleed out. Now, in this case, I used Video Copilot's Hit Distortion, which is an epic hit distortion plugin. Unfortunately, it's not free and you can't kind of get a similar effect using After Effects Trap Code not trap code, uh, turbulent displacement effect, but it's not gonna look as good. I really highly suggest you guys take a look at the, his distortion plugin because it's gonna give you the best heat distortion element. So in, so in this case, I really wanted the heat distortion to be kind of very high density and not very small. So in this case, these are the settings. Again, guys, depending on your clip, how close you are to the action, the resolution, all of these values will have to change and be adapted. But in this scenario, I want to talk to you guys a bit about what I did. I put it on smoke. I changed the distortion amount to be quite high at 20, but then on the noise scale, I cranked it up all the way to 500 because that is the value that controls how kind of the distortion kind of distorts and how big the distortion is because if you put it down to to a lower value let's open up the distortion actually so we can see what's happening and let after effects load see what happens because i have the distortion amount quite high if i put the value of the noise scale lower it kind of makes it very like blocky and very like small scaled in terms of the map that the distortion follows to create that effect but if you crank that value up then it makes it let's go 500 open it up again then it makes it blending quite cool because the distortion still does occur in a high density but it's not as aggressive to our clips and that would be it guys with all of those things combined now you have an amazing Draco Ball Z inspired energy orb effect Okay guys, so that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you learned something. Make sure to check the links in the description and I'll see you guys on Sunday with another Filmmaker React episode. Until then, stay awesome, stay safe and stay creative.